Hello friends! I'm sure you've all wondered why Mexicans call Alejandro Medellin in the movie Sicario. To be honest, it took me a few viewings of the film to figure it out. But now, I'd like to help you understand what's going on and how Medellin fits into the story. Yes, Alejandro was once a prosecutor. After the loss of his family, he felt hopeless and decided to seek revenge on the people who killed them. We should remember who caused the death of his family. Fausto Alarcón, a drug lord from the Sonora cartel. In the beginning of the movie, we see Emily Blunt and her team find a house filled with dozens of bodies. These people were killed by the cartel. Long before the emergence of the Mexican cartels, Pablo Escobar founded the successful Medellin cartel, which had a monopoly on cocaine trade around the world. The cartel operated from 1967 to 1993 in America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Oceania, during which time it was the largest drug cartel and supplied three times more cocaine than its main competitor, the Cali Cartel. Pablo and Medellin entered into an agreement with Cali, which allowed Medellin to control the cocaine trade in Miami, while Cali controlled it in New York. While both factions agreed to split Los Angeles and Houston, it was only natural that the monopoly on cocaine would eventually fall into the hands of the Mexican cartels. Medellin's former glory had faded, and so what was the problem? Josh Brolin's character would help us answer that question. He explains that Medellin refers to a time when the drug trade was controlled by a single group. He believes that this order provides a sense of stability, but until someone can convince 20% of people to stop using drugs, this system will continue. He mentions an episode where Alejandro is trying to restore this order. Alejandro works for the CIA to eliminate warring cartels and restore the dominance of the Medlin cartel in the region. Clearly, the CIA prefers dealing with one cartel instead of a group of cartels fighting each other. Do you think this is impossible? Perhaps it's just a fairy tale? Maybe it is all just a fantasy? Let's think about the famous Narcos series. Or rather, one minor but very interesting character, Bill Steckner, known as Mr. Green. He worked for the CIA and provided weapons to various rebel groups around the world, especially in Latin America. In 1992, he was assigned to lead the CIA's office in Colombia. Bill Steckner is based on Felix Ismael Rodriguez, a retired CIA agent who provided weapons to the Nicaraguan Contras, similar to Steckner's role in Narco Mexico. Felix also participated in numerous CIA operations in Latin America just like Bill's character in Narcos and Narcos Mexico. In the series after Escobar's death, Plug agreed to Agent Penny's return to Colombia. At that time, representatives of the Cali Cartel were discussing a surrender agreement with the government, which was approved by the U.S. State Department in Colombia. Meanwhile, representatives of the Cali Cartel were also discussing a surrender deal with the government, and it was approved by the State Department. Steiner sought Penny's return in order to ensure the legitimacy of the surrender deal and warned him not to pursue the Cali cartel. In simple terms, the government has made the Cali cartel the sole major supplier of cocaine and the Medellin cartel has been marginalized. As we can see, the events depicted in the film are not some fictionalized tales, but rather real-life events that are occurring behind our backs. Secret services are playing a game, selecting winners and losers or rather, those who are more convenient to deal with and control. Additionally, on Wikipedia, you can find an article dedicated to accusations against the CIA's involvement in the drug trade. After watching this video, I recommend that you read this article. Since we now have a better understanding of the full extent of the government's involvement in this matter, I would like to address a key question. Why are members of the Mexican cartels referred to as Alejandro Medellin? It is unclear for how long the operation depicted in the Sicario film has been in planning. We cannot exclude the possibility that the events in the film are a result of years of planning, which began when Medellin was at the height of his fame. I have several plausible theories on this subject. We must not forget that Alejandro was once a prosecutor. Let's remember the scene near the torture room, where Alejandro exchanged a few words with a colleague who knew him from his previous position and life. During his time as a prosecutor, Alejandro often came into contact with members of the cartel, which eventually led to the death of his wife and daughter. His face was often on TV during that time, and many members of the criminal underworld knew him by sight. 
This theory is supported by the scene where Alejandro talks to Guillermo in the torture room. As we recall, Guillermo states that he does not understand English before Alejandro invites him for a walk in Yankee country. As we understand from his reaction, the drug lord's brother is not fully aware of Alejandro's abilities, which means that he knows him from their past life as a prosecutor. Let's move on to theory two. Matt informs Kate that Alejandro worked for the Medellin cartel before his promotion to the CIA. It seems to me that there are two possible scenarios for how events led Alejandro to his current position. Option number one, Alejandro, as a prosecutor, defended the interests of the Medellin cartel, which was against the interests of Mexicans. In the movie Sicario 2, we saw that Gillick killed a lawyer from the Matamoras cartel in Mexico City, and before killing him, took off his mask to show him who his killer was. The cartels have a huge influence in those areas, and corruption is deeply rooted in government, including the executive branch. Therefore, I don't think such a scenario is impossible. Version 2 Alejandro is an assassin working for the Colombian cartel. After the tragic death of his wife and daughter, he does not want to escape, forget about everything, and start a new life in peace. Instead, he channels all his hatred and comes to the Medellin cartel for assistance. Indeed, carrying out a plan for revenge against the powerful Mexican cartels requires more than one person. I believe the Colombians have taught Alejandro how to handle weapons and tactics. At some point, CIA agents notice him and take him under their wing, deciding to use his anger in their favor. He believes that the enemy of your enemy is your friend, and by helping the CIA, he can achieve his revenge. And here's theory number three. During the process of creating this video, I encountered some interesting thoughts about Alejandro. He has become a kind of legendary figure among the cartel members. After the death of his loved ones, Alejandro began to kill anyone involved in the murders of his family. It became undesirable and even dangerous to mention him openly. In the eyes of Mexicans, he has become a boogeyman, a terrifying figure from a fairy tale. The time when Alejandro became guilty was not just that, but also dangerous. In the minds of Mexicans, he is a figure of fear, a horror story straight out of a fairy tale. No wonder, because for Alejandro, the ends always justify the means, and he would make any sacrifice to achieve his goals. This aspect is perfectly illustrated in the scene where Alejandro obtains information in the torture chamber, as well as in a scene that only appears in the draft version of the film script. We will discuss all of this in detail in my next video, so please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and follow for updates.